and it was for credit and with medical school costs to doing this. And the other place that I identified is on uh, the Calico Creek, right above the dam that the township owns uh, near uh, Stevens Road. Mm -hmm. and there's a row of <clears throat> houses and commercial facilities in that area. But there's a block of land that we own uh, that really isn't being used for anything. It appears in the aerial photographs that there's a lot of erosion taking place there. And I haven't had a chance to go out and look at it. <clears throat> I don't think I've been in that area before. That's the area just before you get to Fishing Creek Park that has Stevens Road. Remember where the goats were on the island? Yeah. Back in that area. <laughs> Good island. Harvey knows that. We know that. Yeah. Right. So that would potentially be another place that could be planted with trees. So that I'm looking into. So I'll have to get back to the numbers on that. But if it's through the grant, then uh, it's probably not going to cost much of anything. It's it's an implementation grant, so it's for the cost of actually putting it in. It doesn't include design work on it, but basically for designing this, it's basically trees in a line at a certain interval. And so there's not a lot of design considerations into doing this. So the expense to the township would not be that that would be my own concern, mm -hmm. obviously. We're all right. about free money and would like that, but if I'll the product costs 200000 or 300000 <laughs> and we're only giving them no, 75, we're talking we can't. Yeah, we're we're talking a few thousand. Okay, perfect. But does it allow for maintenance then? Uh, um, it does have to be maintained. You have to remove invasive species. Um, but it isn't a big deal. It's a, you know, once a year, we walk through to that stuff. And if trees die after three years, you can just replant some. So there'll be a little bit of replanting, but nothing radical. Fairly simple maintenance. Okay, any questions of Ken? I'm yes. curious as to what the foliage of the trees that's, that we're proposing to plant along the stream is going to do to the water itself. Um, <coughs> right, so yeah, obviously the trees along the stream, leaves get into the, the stream. Isn't that going to be somewhat counterproductive to get our numbers down? Uh, actually, no. The, the ecology of the stream, most of the life that's in the stream uses leaves as the base energy source. So the little tiny larval insects that are down there, uh, they're eating the leaves, that's their primary food source. Those then get eaten by fish and whatever else is in the stream. So, <clears throat> in fact, it's not really polluting, it's what's driving the, the ecosystem in the stream itself. Some of the theory there is too, the trees shade the, shade the water, keep it from getting <clears throat> and quite as hot. Temperature is very important for a lot of the aquatic species. Part of the whole theory involved there. As you lower the temperature, it holds more oxygen and <coughs> the things in the stream that heat oxygen, which is most of them. Um, for the public's knowledge, with repairing buffers, and we've been dealing with this for a lot of years, there are three zones with repairing buffer. The first zone from the creek bank is 15 feet, virtually untouchable. Let it grow up as naturally as possible in the lot. Second zone is 50 feet from that. So realistically, you've got 75 feet on the top of that creek bank out 75 feet, that should be basically tree, shrubs, you know, high growing grasses, so any flooding will be filtered out before it gets to that creek. And then the remaining 10 feet is usually a, a, a lot to be cut and loaded. But um, this is something that we've been dealing with for a lot of years. And uh, the areas Ken mentioned, we don't have any trees, no, no cover, no canopy to lower the water temp. So it is Not some primarily areas a spot. Areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's space to do it and now uh, by the street here it can be done angled so it doesn't you know, affect the site for the police answer and exit it would be a so that that needs to have good visibility. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Freedomstown no working group, Chad Weaver, Stevens Power Company.
Good morning. I'm actually here representing the three fire chiefs for Ringstown, uh, Stevens, and Smokestown. Uh, we have two, two things we'd like to discuss with the board and the manager. Uh, the first one would be the uh, formation of the uh, emergency services working groups that was proposed last month with the EMS and the fire side. Um, we had some discussions amongst the three chiefs about that and had heard some of the comments and stuff that was discussed last time. So our counter proposal that we bring to you today is we would like to have that meetings here at the township building. Uh, we would like them open to the public. Uh, we want to control the public discussion and questions on that so that we're not sitting there getting berated the entire time as we're having that, either with having questions at the end and or questions sent to you via email to put on the agenda for the next month or the next meeting discussions. Uh, but we think that full openness would be a good thing and to do it here on, on common ground for everybody. So that is our suggestion. Can you all be in our, are in agreement? The three chiefs are. We're going to ask you to send out an email to the fire departments uh, to find out a good date or days that work for that and how many times you'd like to have that meeting. We're hoping you'll spearhead all that as the manager here and do that. That would give us a chance to take that back to our organizations and present that and make sure that the organizations are in agreement with it. Now, I know my president has, has been heard about it, and Jeff was brought on speed here the other day with it. However, we'd like to take it officially back as an email letter from the township saying this is the request and to have that here. We'd also like to keep that group a little smaller than what you had suggested to start. Okay. We would like to keep it as the manager, the three chiefs, and the three presidents. And then as warranted, once we start that discussion, to add on what needs to be added on. As, as we stated last time, that was a lot of people in that group to kind of get, to get the thing started with, but that would at least get us sitting down and getting the process started. Okay. And then adding Rick or whoever the EMS responsible people would be as a topic for discussion <coughs> during that time and cover that as one of the there. Well, first of all, here's board's opinion, and then I, I, I have some comments on that. Okay. My comments would be, um, if you're going to invite the public, and be prepared to have things come flying at you. So there would definitely have to be some, some rules laid down. Um, <coughs> as we all know, those three of you have not gotten along together in the past. And so I would expect all three of you to act professionally at these meetings. And, I would be guaranteeing that, especially if it's going to be public. Um, and I, I have no issue with that. And I think, I think the big part of that is, is you're going to send that email back to our companies and you'll get our company's opinions on that. You will not get my personal opinion, Scott's personal opinion. You'll get the response from our organization as a whole. So I, and I think we have to do what they want us to do in the end. The answer to that is as you do to your board. So. And that's why we're saying send that letter back to the organization so that they can have it as a discussion and get, get it going. Perfect. And that's I don't I'll think help. we have an issue with getting along in public, do we? Yeah. No, we, we we'll kick work. each other under the table so nobody can see it. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we do definitely have different opinions, though. And that is the whole objective of this particular type of board. So if you cannot come there, and, and uh, argue out your differences at that meeting, it's not going to be a real productive meeting for the future of our right. communities, the That's emergency right. services. Right. And we do want it in the public because there is a lot of things that go around on social media and behind everybody's, and, and we want and, it to be that. that. Let's stop the rumor mill. Absolutely. Yes. That, that would stop it right then and there. If you want to know, come to the meetings, you'll hear it firsthand. Yeah. That's kind of, I think, what we kind of agree upon to do that. So, um, and that's why I have, that's why you have not received a letter yet from me, because I know that you gentlemen are coming to ask additional things or change of things, so we will get that letter out. Uh, the board, your opinion on what they're asking for? I'm good with it. Sounds all positive to me. Yes. You're the experts, you know what to do. Well, we, we feel this is the right way to do it. I mean, it'll take care of a lot of the good okay. issues that we think we currently have. All right. So I will send out that letter and I will give you a list of dates uh, that this room is open 
that we can schedule those meetings. And hopefully just between the six of us and you we can find common ground here. So. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm ecstatic that all three of you are going to come to the table and we're going to work together for the betterment of these colleges. So thank you. All three of you. Just as an aside, we can assume you're talking uh, for the third chief as well. Yes, he could not make it here today, but yes, that's why I said I represent the three chiefs, yeah. only the three chiefs. Yeah. So. Just for the record. Yeah. Yep. And then I do have a second item for you. It's once I have a suggestion relative to that. Like the township supervisors' meetings, maybe it could be videotaped and posted on the website for those people that can't attend. Mm -hmm. No, but are all these? Well, I think it should be their decision. That their right. first meeting, you decide what. You all your do. other, all your other committee meetings within the township aren't no. videoed, and no, I don't think we should do that. Okay. If you have enough of interest, I believe you'll be at the meeting because there'll be there'll be a public invite to all the meeting dates. Yeah. But I don't think it needs to be videoed and put on. You know, planning and zoning and all those other subtopics aren't up on. Mm -hmm. On the website to watch. Okay. I have, Tommy has something for you, then I have a second one. Well, question. <coughs> Why are you excluding Can you state your name and address, captain? please? We're not. We're <laughs> saying he needs to be part of that as, as a subtopic in that. That'll be that. We want to form one group, and the EMS will be a topic in that group. So Rick or whoever the representative will have to attend that. I'm sorry, I didn't get your question. I understood you to say that there's the three chiefs and the three presidents. I'm sorry, he you needs your name, and could you repeat the question again? Your name for the record for our minutes. My name is Tom Clay. Okay, and I'm the a member of the Green Sound Fire Company. Yes, you are. Yeah. And uh, my question is why the, I have heard them say that the committee would be three chiefs and three presidents. Right. Why they exclude the EMS captain? He would be a topic in that involved in that group that would be a half hour or whatever set aside just for EMS and him and or his assistants would have to come and be part of that organization topic. We didn't necessarily feel that yeah, he needed to settle so. in that group, but he needs right. to be involved in the EMS. EMS is part of that. In, in, the, in the original, I think, meeting <coughs> last time, there was going to be two separate boards. We believe that all the volunteers already are attending that substantial amount of meetings, get a lot of time away. We believe that one working group can handle this. And all I think we're proposing is that at the initial meeting, it's the chiefs, the presidents, the manager, to sit down to decide who all needs to be on that committee and what topics need to be discussed. If that committee gets too large, you're never going to get anything accomplished because you're going to have too many opinions. And you're also going to have a very rough time scheduling the meetings um, for everyone to be able to make each and every meeting. So we thought to start, the president's chief and the manager should sit down, discuss who needs to be on that committee. But EMS is definitely a, a very primary topic. So I think Rick and several others from EMS will be on that committee once it's formed and, and properly rolled. So does this first meeting have to be advertised in public, or is this just something to have yeah, a I meeting would think to that establish? This one would no, I wouldn't think the first one would need to be. But then from there on out, once we establish who's on the committee, then from there on out, they would be probably <coughs> I don't think that's that would be right. our recommendation. Yeah. You need to have that first one to just get the formation of what you want to do and get a, an agenda formed to at least get a vision. Uh -huh. Okay. Alan okay. I've got one more for you then, Alan, if everybody's good on Alan. Uh, the, the second one is like I'm representing the same three individuals as uh, trustees of the Relief Association. Um, as, as you're aware, we had some other discussions earlier in the year and in the last year that with the police department, the radio issues have been, and the emergency services have been horrible with some areas in the township the police have addressed theirs. Uh, the fire service and the ambulance organization has been going through the same process as the police department, and we are coming to you looking to see if there's some funds available to help us purchase all radios for the organizations. Um, as, as the police department has done, they've bought the Motorola's. Uh, we have looked at the Motorola's, and we are currently trying two other brands out right now that are cheaper. Uh, one is the Harris radio that we had for about a month now. 
Uh, Harvey had started testing that here about a month ago, and I believe Scott has it now. That radio has performed very well for us. Uh, we do like that one. Uh, we are waiting for a, another radio to come, which is a Kenwood, which is approximately $200 cheaper than the Harris. Uh, we've asked for that two or three weeks ago. We have not got that in our hands yet to do that. Uh, we'd like to get that in hand to go out and test that to see how that compares. Uh, so what we're asking is if the township would consider purchasing 12 radios, which would be three for each fire department and three for the ambulance association to take care of our dead spots. And this 12 radios, the cost for the Motorola's, I think you told me came in at about $48,000. Actually, with the quote that we got, it was 52800 They came in, uh, their, their features or options on the Motorola, so to get the carriers, the strap belts, the mics, and all that stuff, it actually came out to $4,400 per radio for the fire service with the program, which came in at $52,800. What we're asking for would be to look at the lesser two models and the dollar figures and use the $3,200 piece price tag, which would be the Harris model. Um, we do not feel that the Motorola gives us anything extra than the Harris already does at a savings of $1,200 a unit. So 32 times 12 is about 38,800. So is there is there money in the fireman's relief for this? Because that can fireman's relief money. There is money in the relief for that. However, we are sitting in a position right now in the relief that we're worried about the money that we do have. Um, we have approved to purchase three of them through the relief at this point in time because of finance being a little tight. We have an outstanding bill of uh, about $35,000 for a year. We're in the middle of purchasing X amount of sets every year that costs us between $35,000 and $50,000. Uh, we approved uh, the purchase of 50 pagers that need to be replaced by the end of the year because the new system will be shut down. I believe that was an expense of about $40,000 or $45,000, and that does not cover all our members. And then the air packs that need to be replaced in the next three years uh, at about a quarter million dollars or so. Uh, so that's actually what we're saving for. If we were to spend all our money, we will not be doing our air packs in the next three years. The last grant cycle does not have approval for them air packs on that. So at this point in time, we have to eat the quarter million dollar expense. And that's basically what we're saving for, because that is a big one for us. So you are saving for that. I have the yes. opportunity to attend in your meeting. Thank yes. you. I enjoyed that. Um, you did hand out your budget at that meeting, and I did see that there at the end of the year provided everything goes according to your budget you will have a small savings not nothing humongous but you know uh, 77,000 I believe so is that money earmarked like could some of these radios be purchased with that or is that money specifically earmarked that majority of that money I believe was earmarked like for truck we're looking to purchase a new truck at Steve's. Okay, so well, no, I, would, I would like to see a line item on your budget that's saying any leftover money. That well, you typically most of that falls to the relief because that's who purchased that okay. stuff. The fire department as a whole has not really done that. We've done purchases via grants through the fire companies and paid the, the writer's fees and all that other stuff. But we typically let that fall on the relief association. So, so this all brings me back to the point where we all need to get together and talk about this kind of stuff. Because I can tell you right now, the this township is not in a financial position to do that. We are running on an extremely tight budget ourselves. And we have to find this money somewhere. And we have to support you gentlemen. Uh, so we need to get together and start looking at all the options out there. You know, are they, these radios, can they be done maybe through the phone system? I know there's push the top phones out there. Would something like that work? I, I don't believe so. I believe it has to be on our county P25 okay. system. I mean, it's the same exact same system. Okay, Police and see, that's the kind of stuff I need to know. Yeah, there, I don't so, believe we're being forced to this, actually. Yeah. We don't have to say it is. So. Yeah. And the system gets turned off December 31st at the end of the year, so. So we have to act this year. We have to migrate over. Yeah. So you don't have a choice. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we do have a choice on the, on the, mo on the portable way our paging system is what's going to stop the end of 2020. So that $45,000 um, quote that he told you earlier for 50 pagers is what has to be done by, by year end. Um, however, we're not real good to the community if our, if our portable radios, just like the police department's Absolutely. radios, don't work in specific areas of our township. 
and we lose life because we can communicate with our neighboring department inside, outside of the building. <coughs> it becomes a really cost-effective way, I guess. Of I think our team has something to offer here. Yeah, and by no means am I. I think you guys should have the best radios possible. I agree with all that. But our cost per radio was, it came at 3700 for the Motorola. That was with your trade-in. That was with the trade-in, that was with the microphone, that was with the holder. Now, I don't know if you were, and I'm not saying that I'm pushing Motorola, I'm not a salesman, I don't care. Yeah, we, we actually have a Motorola to test at the moment. The Motorola does not perform any better than the Rome. So, so we're much? not, at this point, willing to go and spend the money for a, a, Mo, a, a Motorola because it, it does what we got now. Right, but how much work are you talking to Harris's? Uh, 3200 3200 I thought you said 4800 No, 32 I think it was 44 Motorola yep. equipped. Now, this would no trade because we would rather not trade because the radios that we now have are more than efficient for fire ground operation. So... Firefighter and firefighter on, on fire ground, they're great. Um, command to county and, and a lot of those more important uh, messages are, are what we're worried that are going to be getting. I just thought you said 4800 for the Harris, and I thought that was a lot. No, I'll clarify that for you. The Motorola's are 4400 okay. the Harris is 3200 and the Kenwood, which we do not have yet, is about 3000 and, and their radios are different. They're a little more ruggedized than that type of thing. I think they're waterproof and get wet and all that kind of yeah, stuff. They, so they are Harris. different. Well, any, they, any fire radio is a little bit different. Than more rugged than yours. Understood. So that's the difference between 37 and 44, most likely? Well, I, I think it's the brand is, is more of the difference. Scott, let me ask you this. So you guys have actively <coughs> tested them in your dead spots. That's the critical yeah, thing. Yeah, we have. The only one we have not tested is Kenwood. That's okay. on order, or just as a new a new radio on the can, on Lancaster County system. Right. We're waiting for that radio to come in. We I believe in, in Greenstown at least. I've talked to Chad a ton about that, or Donnie yet would be leaning toward the Kenwood. The actual the output of the radio, the size of the battery, the warranty of the radio is all all exceeds the Motorola. Uh, so Motorola, there is no doubt you're paying a lot of money for the name. A ton of money. It's yeah. known count, uh, nationwide. It, it's the synonym to communication. Right. And Harris has primarily been a federal and tactical military, military application because yes. we used to use those radios quite not, a bit. Not, not as well known. Uh, they tell me it's a very reliable radio. However, if you look at the warranty and you look at the battery size and you look at some of the other noise cancellation features, right. I believe that the Kenwood is, would outperform the Harris. <clears throat> and I believe it's going to outperform the Motorola. How soon can for, you get the for twelve hundred less? So how soon can you get the Kenwoods in to do your testing? He told me as soon as he has it in hand, we'll get it. I'm hoping within the next week or two we have it. Okay. So would we be given any kind of rate by buying in bulk? No, the, this, the, all the pricing that we're utilizing is on the Lancaster County Communications website, and it is special pricing for any department within Lancaster County. It so is the discounted price. Or, we could go by. I was thinking if we could get other municipalities to go in with us or something like that. We could go by 400, and I think we've got the bottom line. Same problem. Problem. Okay. I, I, I need to formally say something here. I, I disagree with Penny on this. I think it's totally unacceptable. You guys have radios in dead spots. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing I said about the police department. Mm -hmm. That is something that we absolutely have to find a way to find. Period and story. That's beyond unacceptable in my mind. I think we should put this on our agenda for the next meeting. You come back and report to us. Yeah, and, and that's why Kenwood in hand. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I'm asking when you get in the Kenwoods in hands is and is, mm -hmm. if there's any help you need from us in terms of getting that Kenwood to test. I, I mean, that needs to be done ASAP. Mm -hmm. yeah. If your guys are out there in dead spots. Yeah. That'll be the opportunity for the board, you know, we can dig into the budget and, we'll and uh, yeah. see if something can be moved around. Yes. Doug, Doug Mackley, help me out here. You say dead spots. Is that now on my cell phone I get dead spots? But that's not the phone, that's the carrier. So, what is, are you saying that you have dead spots right now? That's not a function of the carrier, that's a function uh, of the I, phone. I think partially, partially, it is the carrier. 
So there's a tower yeah. in, in right. Adamstown Borough, I believe, that county ran out of money when they did this P25 system and opted out of that particular tower. That tower is there. I think it costs roughly a quarter of a million dollars to bring it up and make it operational. I think that would make this entire end of the county good with any radio. Okay. However, <clears throat> with not having that tower, the internal makings on the Motorola, on the Kenwood, are just better. It's a internal, power, issue, power issue then. It, they, <coughs> what they told me was it's the quality of the antennas and the internal parts okay. in the radio on the Kenwood, the Harris, and the Motorola <coughs> that make the reception better. So it is a, a Com combination. Both, okay, combination thank you. Both. I wasn't arguing with you. I just needed. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So, I, I just want to come across to you. Thank you, Marcy, for your comment. You know, I came across it, and I think this was important. That certainly was not true, obviously. Um, it is very important. So. Okay. Yeah, chance. Um, Transpires there. And I have a question here. Since it's an immense cost to the township for these radios, mm -hmm. we're not doing it out of our own choice. We're being forced to do it by the county. <laughs> Has the township thought of sending at least a letter to the county expressing its displeasure or getting together with other municipalities to say, to corner the county and say, hey, you guys forced us to do this, it's not working. Can we come to some kind of agreement to either extend the old system for another year or get the county to put some funds into a project to help us upgrade radios to a better quality radio or turn towers on that, that are built that are not turned on? I can answer from my end. The Chiefs of Police Association approached the county commissioners in reference to the county purchasing in bulk radios where the townships or the cities or the police departments would go to the county, ask for 12 radios out of their stock, pay the fee before the radio, nothing cheaper and the county not doing anything, and they said no way. So we can send a letter, but it probably won't matter. Yeah, we fire the links of county fire chiefs association have also done that same thing. Same thing. So, I mean, they, the, the county is well aware of the position of all the departments within Lancaster County um, and their displeasure with you know this being forced upon them with no way to fund it. I don't think it's ridiculous. Well unfortunately that's just all far away. Most of all we're doing it is the way it is. Okay. Okay, can we move on? Grangetown back on the MS funding counter response. Yeah, good morning. Um, I'm Jeff Carter, the president of Ringstown Fire Company. Um, uh, here on behalf of the Ringstown Ambulance. Um, apologize, I got some notes here, so if I keep referencing the notes. Um, basically, during the last supervisor's meeting, it was brought up by um, some residents about the $96,000 that was in the budget for <coughs> the ambulance, um, and there was uh, basically, I believe incorrect information that was passed along in that meeting um, concerning the funds. Um, one note I'd like to just add to this before I get into the, into the trenches with this is um, we have been discussing this since 2017. Reamstown has taken the stance that it should be discussed kind of behind private doors with the township and the department. Um, Again, social media has gotten very involved with the situation, um, so we have kind of kept a silent stance with this because we felt it could be hashed out, and if it was going to be coming up in a public meeting, that it should be addressed by the supervisors. That's not how it was addressed, so that's the reason I'm here today. Um, some of the factors <coughs> I just kind of want to address um, with our EMS situation right now. Um, Reamstown does house the EMS for the township. Um, we have housed the EMS as long as I know. Um, we are over 100 years old, um, our service. With that, unfortunately, we have an issue with volunteers, effective 2018. Unfortunately, any individual driving on the ambulance or riding on the ambulance that was not certified, we could not bill for that service. 
So it took a lot of our firefighters that were commute, that were helping with the EMSI driving the ambulance. It took them out of the mix because then we couldn't go for that call. Um, so that basically took us to a lot more pain. Um, the number of calls and hours run, basically this year we ran our record calls. We ran 1,152 calls. And those calls we had run at Greenstown, and we are now ranked 12th. The, we are the 12th busiest um, basic life support unit in the county out of at least 100 units. Um, there's only one other basic life support that's ahead of us. All the other ones are medic units. So that is uh, that was surprising when I heard that. Um, and also, out of those 1,152 calls, only 846 of them were billable. Um, if you pick up 911 to make a call, if you fell in your house, you pick up 911. If you do not transport the individual to the hospital, you cannot go for that call. It cost us 865, sorry, $665 to pull that rig out of the station. So we kind of do the math with the lost calls. Um, now kind of getting into um, where Reamstown is with the situation with the funding. Um, Mid-2017, Scott Russell, which was the council manager at that time, met with uh, Chief Scott Aki to discuss ambulance services, uh, funding for that. Um, it was requested by Chief Aki for the need for additional paid personnel due to the issues I just went over. Um, Scott Russell did make the suggestion of $96,000 for that funding. Uh, that was not uh, brought up by uh, Chief Aki. Chief Aki did provide a letter to the supervisors uh, for those funds, um, and uh, it was asked that the board um, approve that in their budget. At that time, also an EMS board was supposed to be established. Um, it was my understanding that that board met on a couple times, and that was to determine the situation of the EMS um, for the township because of a nationwide issue. Um, once we had that kind of verbal from Mr. Russell, EMS, um, Reamstown took the stance and we hired one full-time personnel and we hired several part-time personnel due to that funding coming. In November 2017, the supervisors did approve that in their budget um, for those funds. Um, March of 2018, Mr. Russell and Chief Aki met, and Chief Aki was advised at that time that um, there would be no funds released for 2018. Um, it was due to lack of funding. Basically, <coughs> the town left to go. There was no issue to fight, do anything, because the funds weren't there and weren't going to go. Summer of 2018, um, some documents were presented to the town, from the township to the fire department. Uh, we received a document on a plain piece of paper, no letterhead, no date, with four requirements <coughs> that were needed. Um, our executive board discussed those four <coughs> requirements. Out of those four requirements, basically one was justified. Um, the other three were to basically split the ambulance off as a separate entity. Um, financially, the township could not sustain that, um, so basically we left that set. Um, at that time, we produced paid invoices for those paid personnel um, to the supervisor or to the township, um, and they were noted in emails that uh, those funds could be released. In May then, additional conditions were added to the um, requirements for those funds. Um, there was one email chain that had five on, then another email chain that had seven conditions. Um, out of the seven conditions, two of the items did not apply for the funding for the paid personnel. One of the items was previously submitted due to the invoicing and the other four items um, were, were being discussed with Wallspan. Uh, September 10th, we received a letter from the new township manager, or the intern township manager, which is now Penny, um, outlining the basically five items um, on that, and basically her history of you know the funding, the auditing, kind of everything that goes into it. 
Um, uh, we did, upon receipt of that uh, letter, we discussed with our board, um, and then we requested meetings with Penny and supervisors if needed, but through Penny. Um, in October, full financials were provided to the township for both fire and ambulance. Um, those numbers were broke out because we do keep separate uh, we do keep separate numbers in our books for the ambulance and fire because they can't they can't they're in one account they're they're all in one account but they're separate numbers because we have to keep track of invoicing and how we get paid. We do have professional services that handle all of our invoicing for us. It is outsourced and they are only paid when we get paid. So they are looking to get the money. They lose if we lose. So it's their, it's their incentive to get us the funds, get us the money. Um, we finally were able to have a meeting in December with uh, Penny and Supervisor um, RC to review some of the details that Penny and I have been emailing back and forth on, also communicating. At that meeting, we kind of went through the history from 2017 to all the way through to December, um, came up with a, we felt, an amicable solution to get the funding for 2019, which was, you know, updating all the contracts, the updated finances. We were asked to break the EMS funding or the EMS finances out one step further and equate the cost of utilities, cost of building, cost of use of space. So I took it upon myself to, with the treasurer, which Tom Clay, um, we broke those out and it made the numbers worse. So, it, and it would, you know, so those, that information, um, we asked to be put on the docket for the tw uh, December 19th meeting. That information was all sent over to Penny um, prior to that meeting with also cornerstone information, which Penny sat in a meeting with us on December 11th with cornerstone, mini uh, cornerstone billing, went over everything. She, I think she got an eye opener at that meeting. Um, so all that information then was also given to Penny with our finances. Um, so prior to, or as of December 16th, um, I'm not sure that we've met every condition that was given to us over the last two years, but you have our finances, you had our contracts, you had everything prior to the last supervisor's meeting of the month, of the year. We were notified by Penny prior to the supervisor's meeting in December that we would not get funds. Um, so that's kind of the history of where we, where we are and where we're at today. Um, as you can see, there's a trend with this, with additional conditions. We tried to be as, uh, compliant as possible with this. Um, at any given times, our books are open. We have public meetings like this. Our books are open to the public. Anybody can come and see our books. Um, uh, we have supplied the contracts. We've supplied the finances. We've supplied additional information as far as billing, running areas. Um, so, uh, Beamstown Fire Company has discussed the current situation with our ambulance service and we are to the point where us as a company, Reamstown Fire Company, Reamstown Ambulance, will only sustain these losses for so long. We will make a decision as a department how long we can justify this service. Um, we are in a position where we're not going to take steel and borrow. <coughs> you know where we're at with it. If you would take this entity, if we close down, you have to bring another entity like ours in here. You have an expense, minimum expense of $1.4 million. Um, that does not cover any wages. That's just an estimate. Um, you can probably get a service coming into the township, like maybe Effort or Ryan or somebody else. Response times are going to hinder from that because we all just went out of business. Now they're bringing in um, other municipalities. So, you know, in closing, we're asking the citizens of the township uh, that they know all the facts. It would relate to the matter of the situation. Uh, prior to presenting to the public and supervisors um, that they will hopefully correct the comments from the meening, uh, last meeting that we did not provide the uh, 
the necessary documentation, and the members of the Reamstown Fire Company do take extreme pride in the services that we do offer to the township, and we are honored to be a part of this association. So, you know, on behalf of the Reamstown Fire Company, I'd like to thank you for the time. Um, you know, I ask that uh, those, <coughs> funds, those funds be reconsidered for 2019. We know they can't be because we're into 2020. Um, we definitely need to have uh, a clear line drawn in the sand of conditions of what is needed, and we want to stop all the, you know, again, like we talked, social media, the public battering. At any given time, I'll gladly come here and express, you know, where Beamstown Fire Company is. You know, Scott's been dealing with this for a long time. I've been involved with it. We felt we were handling it the right way because it's like, we didn't want to call you out. You didn't want to call us out. We were doing it behind closed doors. Other people didn't see it that way. Now it comes to the forefront, and that's why I'm here today. So I do thank you for your time, um, and hope everything I presented today aligns with where we are as, as an organization. Thank you. Do we have financially auditable documentation from Williamstown Ambulance? You ask a question? I'm just asking the board and I'm asking Benny this question. We Financially have, auditable information related to the ambulance. Yes, I think we have an audit summary. Correct, you said? That's correct. I gave summary. you in October, in October, I think second, you received the ambulance finances with the fire financials when that whole fire report came together. Then in December 16th, I took those finances and broke it out after conversation with Penny. Penny's like, I need to split everything as far as I want to know what their responsibility is for the um, utilities. And we did. We went through and I, Tom and I spent hours spending that because we hadn't looked at it that way. Thank you, but that's not the question that I'm asking. Okay. Here we go. Do we have we have okay. a responsibility in our state audit? Do we have the financial financially auditable documentation to put in our file for the state? We don't have exactly what we need, and let Thank me you. let me Thank you. yes, that is correct. But there's two sides to every story. Okay, I came in in the middle of this, and I am picking up the pieces here. I think in the beginning, uh, you gentlemen were asked to separate your companies. And there's a big difference between separating your companies and separating your books. And I think it has now been determined that we don't need you to separate your company. We do need you to separate your books. You have provided a lot of the information that we requested. Certain things like that it's not a full-blown financial audit, which that would be required. Likewise, the contracts, it, you did send us invoices about your, um, from Wellspan of what your, you know, you said <coughs> payroll, $5,000 or whatever. You know, it's, it's not a breakdown of hours worked by a certain individual. You know, there should be some kind of pay sheet to back up that invoice. And that's what we were asking for. Now, to, to the other extent, you gentlemen have come a long way. And I think our conversations have been great. And I really like the way we work together. And um, you have initiated everything that I've asked you to. You are separating stuff out line item wise, and you're getting more detail. And I know you're going to put those practices into place and get things computerized. So we do still need some things, as RC says, to make it or to cover ourselves. And likewise, you know, you gentlemen have also come leaps and bounds to get us what we need. And I think we're very close. In response to that, I don't know that I've ever had any documentation of what the auditable requirements, what your auditing requirements are for us for our finances. I can't give you something if I don't know what they are. So I gave you, our what I gave you is what I send to Weinhold and Nickel every year when we do our taxes. We gave you our financial statements and they have not change anything from that. So I will give you exactly what you want, but we don't know what that is. Let me, let, let me say this. Um, 
This has nothing to do with me. This has to do with the community, and these are public funds, as I've explained to you guys over the last two years many, many times. Okay? Um, there is no larger supporter of you guys than this board, than th everyone sitting here. There isn't. Um, the conversation we have had with Mr. Russell all, that you reference all the way back, um, I have an email for that conversation. It's sitting right here. You're partially correct in that. The tone of what you're saying is absolutely correct. Okay? Um, this board, including a prior board member sitting there, felt that it was important, no matter what the manager said about the funding and the availability of funding, just like we just said about the radios, that we support our companies. Period. It's totally unacceptable not to. That's why that funding remained in place, it remained in the budget. That's why the existing board, the prior board, was diligently working behind the scenes to get that money to you. The challenge becomes when we don't have anything in our files to document a loss of $96,000 for the ambulance. We have to somehow get something in those files. The challenge becomes when, I don't want to speak on behalf of other board members, but the history is, it's all documented, that all responsible financial leadership in this building looked at the documentation that was provided and said, we can't, we can't do this. We can't write a check for $96,000 based on what we have. So you had three prior board members that agreed. You had a township manager that agreed. You had a financial administrator in this building. It's all there. They all agreed. Okay? We want you guys to get this money. What I disagree with, Jeff, personally, I sat in a meeting with you, with Scott, with Penny. I have the dates here. In that meeting, in December, we said, listen, let's not blow the date. Let's not go past October. Let's go get you your money. It's in the budget. It's sitting there waiting. The easiest thing to do, we proposed when we sat in that room in the back, was let's just go over, get your books on the ambulance. We will spend the time, the energy, the money to help you guys populate all of that and do Excel spreadsheets, proper accounting software, whatever it may be. We offered that to you in December so we could get that check out to you guys before the end of December. You said no. You now, don't that, need to do that. Now, RC, I'll disagree with you right there. That was, that was never the invitation from you or Penny. The invitation that Penny said to us was, put it in the QuickBooks, I'll give you the chart of accounts, and, and we'll get that. Which we still do not we, have. We still do not have a chart of accounts for East Calico Township to put it in QuickBooks. I'm not throwing a penny under the bus. She's new. No, 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 no. And we don't have it. So we can't, we can't give you the facts you need because we don't have what you need. Yeah, I gave you what we have. I can look everything. We can continually look non compliant if you keep changing, if you keep moving. Yeah, you keep post, changing. Right? We're going to always look non compliant. We said you can go to Wellspan. You can go to Wellspan direct, and you can you can you can contract directly with Wellspan, and you can you can pay Wellspan. They'll give you everything you need. We don't. It's not Jeff. There would be one other question to the fund, I think, and that is each year you you have in your budget thirty five, I believe, this year to each fire department thirty thousand to EMS. What we requested was never for you to fund the loss. That that's something that. Our I believe, came up with on his own to fund this loss. What we asked for was additional funding to support our EMS side so that we can operate. With that funding, we were going to put in place additional paid personnel. Now, for that $35,000, you require nothing auditable from any one of the three departments in East Cacolican Township. You just write that check, give it to us. We send you a generic letter back annually. We could use the same letter every year because I'm sure you don't check it. You just stick it in the file or somebody would question that it's the same wording and the same numbers annually. Now this $96,000, all, all it needed to be done was added into the ambulance budget. 
and given a release to the check. <laughs> so I'm not sure why all this extra documentation for this additional funding needs is required over and above what you do for what you've already given. Because the funding was specifically related to losses for That's not true. So it wasn't. It that was, was something you that you came up with. If you look in the minutes, if you look in the November 17th meeting minutes, the meeting minutes said fund funding for paid for additional paid person additional paid drivers. That's what was approved in the budget. For additional paid never to offset never to never to offset. November 17th in the meeting minutes it says for up to for additional paid drivers. Now, I, 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 I thought we were, it may have been not been stated that way, but it was for the, mm -hmm. the offset the losses. There, there was, we weren't offsetting losses. We weren't offsetting losses. We were forced to go to paid personnel because our volunteers couldn't, couldn't keep up. We had the volunteers. I, I guess one of my questions would be, why should the township fund just one EMS organization when they only cover roughly half of the township? That is incorrect. It is not incorrect. That is incorrect. Reinhold's EMS covers a big chunk of East Calico Township. What's to stop them from coming to the township for hundred for ninety-six thousand dollars? How many municipalities? How many municipalities does Reamstown EMS cover? We run into nine. You run you, how many do you nine. cover first two? Oh, we run two, three. Have you hit any of the other two up for money? We have talked to them before. That's and what is their response? We are working through it right now with them. What, what was their response? We are working through it with them right now. You know, I, I just, I know they, there's something that has to be done, and I, I don't want to see any organization get closed down, but why should everybody be forced to pay for something that doesn't cover everybody? If we're going to give money out to EMS organizations, which I think we should, but we should be giving all the EMS organizations that cover the township equal amount of money, or based on their run area based on the coverage area. Because if I have an incident in my house where I need an ambulance, you guys don't come. Reinhold's covers. Okay. Do you, have a member, do you have a membership with Reinhold's? I do. Okay, then you're covered. And we have membership as well. That's why we need to have these meetings and, and, and bring these meetings together because Correct. all of your organizations are facing these problems. Yeah, it's nationwide. Out how to fund them. That's nationwide. Correct. And that's why I want to start these meetings up again to figure out what do we need to do as a township to help all of you out. Not just you three, but all of you. You know, all of our surrounding townships are facing these issues. I think the main thing so, I wanted to get out of this whole thing was if if their if the criteria was not met by Reamstown for the township for audits, documentation, anything like that, why was it not brought up during a meeting or Put us on notice. And why do we have to have somebody else? Because we walk, people walk down the street, people see at the post office, hey, get your money from township, get your money from township, get your money from township. We're not going to throw you guys under the bus. But it's just one of those things. It's like, you know, I understand. You need, you need, I'm a taxpayer, I'm a taxpayer. But I sure as heck want an EMS or a fire truck at my house if my fire, truck, if my house is on fire. You know, same thing. We do. We have other municipalities that come, or other departments that come into this municipality. We've talked about that. We'll work through those issues. Right now, we are your EMS service for the township. We'll close tomorrow. We'll, we'll, we talked about that. We'll close down tomorrow. Then it's on you guys. But we don't, we're not saying that. I'm just kind of going to have the chance. What he's saying is like, we'll stop tomorrow. Then Reinholds can come in here and they can deal with it. That's not why we're here. We're just saying we're a volunteer organization funding a paid service because we don't get the volunteers anymore. We can't. We've done everything we can. It's a nationwide academic. And I'm like, we're doing everything that we can. Mm -hmm. Do we are we gonna close tomorrow? No. Do we need your funding? Yes. We'll make it work. You know, but we as a business, we're running a business, are one day gonna say it's not working and we're done. So, That's why the support is there, and it's in the budget again for 2020. I think we can That's why the support is there. We're, we're going to make things happen. We're gonna, I think we can work this out. Our groups are going to get together, and we're going to make things happen. Because yep. we're going to have a lot of intelligent people talk together, and we're going to work through this. Yes, sir. Yeah, I do think it's our name, 
and, and it, we were made to look at the last public meeting like we didn't comply with what you guys asked. That's what you directly told Chance at the meeting, that we haven't complied with anything you asked for. That's not Our what I said. That is exactly, yeah, that's what, exactly I what I said. I said it's not auditable information. No, no, it's no, not. No, 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 go back and watch no, the video. That's the the you and Alan, the the you and Alan said at that meeting they did not provide the appropriate documentation. That's how it was like. And then his no, next, no, 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 then his next question came in with the additional funding we got. So you guys answered two questions. We did not bring any other information to the board, or I wouldn't even be here. Okay. The only so, thing that, so only thing it, that I was So is it accurate, let me ask you this, is it accurate that I just asked this board and I asked our township manager, this is the correct word, do we or do we not have sufficient auditable information in order to write a check for $96,000? this particular point in time, no we do not. Are we very close? Yes, we okay. are. My yes, question are. to you is, my question to the board is, did Reamstown Fire Company slash ambulance get the information to provide you with all the information? With what you want? With what you know, Penny. Right. With what you know that we talked about, did we get the information from you to provide you with the audible, audible information? No, and that's why I just I brought I brought up those invoices and stuff, the detail on the. So, we are gentlemen. Let's, we're both let's, at let's not destroy everything we've already gained. Right, here. we're both at fault. We have gained. Yes. yes, we are both at fault. You're exactly correct. So I just want so, to make. That's right. I want to clear our name. Yep. I want you guys to clear yep. your name. We just need to get on the same page. And the last thing I want yep. is I don't want anybody else coming to a public meeting and speak on behalf of Reamstown Fire Company. Mm -hmm. If you want to speak on behalf of Reamstown Fire Company, be glad to come to me. I'll give you I'll put my phone number out there. You call me up and I'll gladly come and speak on behalf of you. So I don't need anybody else to speak on behalf of us. That's correct. That's why I'm here. Okay. That's why I, yeah. I took this that. position. Yeah. Okay? Thank you. Jeff. So that's all I want to Okay? No, Are we closing them all? No. We'll come to your house if you have an ambulance. If you need an ambulance. Just make sure we transport you. <laughs> you want to get paid. So, I just want to make sure, you know, like I said, you know, we just need to make sure that we're all on the same page, we move forward, and that's the biggest thing this fire board or the emergency service board has to decide because. Before, and I'm going to say this, and please nobody throw anything at me, before we even talk about any kind of consolidation of fire departments, we need to focus on where is the EMS first. Because I'm going to say, if we make it two years without having a plan in place, we're going to be lucky. I'd like to say we can have it 10 years from let's now. Let's get that plan in place. You know, get our heads together and get that plan But it's like, place. let's focus on what we're going to do with the EMS first that's going to benefit the township. Then we'll bring in Reinholds, we'll bring in yep. whoever else. We'll go to the other municipalities. Because we've already, Penny and I have talked about, let's go to Denver Fire and demand that. Well, let's not demand it. Let's have a plan in place, go to them and say, here's my facts. We run into you for 200 calls. What can we do to get us? But you, you brought a good point back, too, because then they could come to us and say, you know. Well, they'll stop calling service. They'll start calling somebody else. That's right. And then we lose so, it. Then so we're that's right. So, so, you know, that's a fine line that maybe a real yeah. we don't want to go. So we as a township need to figure out yes. where, yes. EM, where the ambulance service is going to be right. moving forward. And both both the fire companies and the EMS and the supervisor are responsible for the citizens here. So we'll go, yeah. we have to work together. Yeah. So thank you. Thanks for coming, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, Doug. Just a comment uh, for, for Jeff and for the EMS people. Um, I don't think, I think part of the thrux of this matter, and the board has to, should, and I know we did it before, but you know, we need to get after our legislators because Absolutely. they don't allow you to bill. Absolutely. You send a bill for 600 bucks, and the state has this mm -hmm. infinite wisdom, mm -hmm. of the Commonwealth, and it's not a state, that you're only allowed to bill half of that or some, right. some number short of $600. So they're losing money every time they go out anyhow. You heard the <coughs> gentleman say, and, and I'm not going to dispute where the $668 comes from. That's not the point. The point is, they're not getting their fair share right off the get-go. You're absolutely correct, yeah. Mr. Matthews. Yeah. 
and, and, and the legislators, the, the Ryan Cutlers and the, all those other guys, I don't know, be hammered right in the 